Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Particularly want to say welcome to those of you who are joining us online for the first time. I hope you're refreshed, you're challenged, you're renewed by your experience of sharing church with us today. Let's get into some worship together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless?
Thanks team for bringing that worship. I hope that you have actually meditated on the words as you've seen those on screen, you've been able to sing or engage with that. We're gonna step into a different kind of engagement now. I'm gonna talk about giving. I wanna say thanks again, church, for your generosity, for the ways that you've continued to give towards our mission of helping people find and follow Jesus through this time. And as we come to this point, 
if you want to give your regular giving, your tithes, or if you just want to give a gift, then you can find our details on our webpage and you can give through electronic transfer, or you can use PushPay and give the funds through that app. Thanks again for your generosity. Look, I've come down here to an area that to me has been a great place of peace and connection. I don't know how you've coped through this time of separation, but one of the things for me has been to continue to exercise and get outside to enjoy the bush. And this is just a piece of bushland in my local suburb that I love. I hope you've been able to find places that you love, places that are, are peaceful, where you find connection, where you thrive in this time. So we're gonna share now in a time of communion. And it's a little different when we share online. If you haven't come prepared, then that's okay. You can have this at the end, or you can pause the video and go and get something to drink, something to eat, and we can share in this together. But remember that in so many ways, we share in this together as the body of believers, followers of Jesus. So let me pray. Lord, we give you thanks. Give you thanks that we get to share together, even when we're not physically together, even when we're not sharing at the same time, Lord, that we are together under you. And we thank you, Lord, for these emblems, for, for the, the bread that represents your body, for the, the cup that represents your blood. And Lord, I pray that as we take these, that we're able to give you thanks for the cross, for your victory, for the hope that we have through your resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. G'day, church, and welcome to Livestreams Online. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all doing well. A special shout out to you if you are visiting or checking us out for the first time. We're so glad that you've joined us and we're looking forward to meeting you in person, hopefully very soon. Today, I get to open the batting, or should I say open the preaching, in our new series in the book of James entitled, Keeping It Real. Here at Livestreams, we, we tend to to pick a book of the Bible each year and hang out in it uh, for a good chunk of time. I find the, the four to five week series thing super hard, having to come up with themes and creative angles every month. I'd rather us be immersed and immerse ourselves in a, in a whole book and really get a good feel for it and then allow God to speak into whatever themes He wants in whatever season we might find ourselves in. And again, when I look at the time we find ourselves in right now, I, I couldn't actually think of a better book for us to be looking at during this COVID-19 season. Last year, we, we did the book of Romans. You know, Romans is a, is a deep book. It's arguably the most intellectual and theological book in the Bible. So we thought, let's preach this year out of one of the least theological books. Ooh, that's a bit controversial. You can't say that. Well, the fact is that the letter of James was, was not readily received into the collection of writings considered as authoritative scripture. And it's believed that, that it was like that because of its perceived lack of theological content. But we do need to be careful not to write this book off as light in the theology department because the keeping it real emphasis of James actually rests on a solid theological foundation consisting of, of three major doctrines. And the first doctrine is the doctrine of God. We see James describe our beautiful God as, as generous, as holy, unchanging, an unchanging source of good. He's the one and only, he's the father of, of his people who were created, are created in his likeness. He's sovereign, just, and full of mercy. The second doctrine is the doctrine of sin. You know, James views sin as universal. It's in all of us. It results in uh, horrible things, death, anger, moral filth, blasphemy, discrimination, bitterness, lust and pride, theft, depression. And he encourages us, he urges us to keep ourselves from being polluted by the world. And then lastly, he teaches on eschatology. 
which is just a, a fancy word for the views around the end times, death and judgment and the final destiny of the soul and of human and of humankind. But in these theologies and, and much more in this book, he, he wants to keep it real, to not just have a, a, a knowledge based faith, but to actually have a faith where the rubber hits the road. Um, saying things like, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. So my job today, my job today is to, to set the scene to provide you with some context to whet your appetite and get you excited for the journey that we're going to go on together in this book, the book of James. It's a great book and I know that we're going to get heaps out of it as individuals and as families and also corporately as a church. So by way of introduction, I want to look at the first verse of the letter and then I want to ask the following questions. Who wrote the letter? When was it written? Who was it written to? And then lastly, why was it written? And then finish just with a short encouragement. So let's read this one verse together. Can we do that together? Let's read it together. James 1 verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. So my first question, who wrote the letter? Who was the author? Is another way to put it. Well, on face value, that's a pretty easy one, isn't it? You're sitting there and you're thinking, well, it says it, says it there in the first verse, James wrote it. Well, the letter, of, the letter names its author, that's true. But the question is, which James? We don't know his actual identity. The reality is James was a very popular and common name in the day. And also in the, the New Testament, uh, there were four men named James. Uh, of the four, two have only ever been seriously considered as the author of this letter. Some scholars believe it was James, the son of, of Zebedee, one of the 12, but most have recognized that he was martyred way too early in 44 AD to have written this letter. So this points to James, the Lord's brother, as the one who wrote this book. Mark um, chapter 6 verse 3 says, Isn't this the carpenter, speaking of Jesus, isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon, aren't his sisters here with us? I'd love us to have a look at this great clip that introduces us to James and gives us a snapshot of his life. Take a look at this. James was the leader of the church in Jerusalem during the middle of the first century. He was also known as the half-brother of Jesus and the author of the Epistle of James. According to both the first century New Testament writings and the second century church, James was named an apostle and a bishop. And along the way, he got the title James the Just. But as the saying goes, things were not always thus. And as it turns out, James the Just started as James the Skeptical. According to the Gospels of John and Mark, James initially did not believe in Jesus' claim to being the Son of God. In fact, he even thought he may have been crazy. That is, until James interacted with Jesus after the resurrection. And then, well, everything changed. By about 44 AD, James was recognized as the leader of the church here in Jerusalem. James the Just has been considered the author of the Epistle of James since the early Christian era. Nobody knows the exact date when he wrote the biblical letter, but a time soon after this Jerusalem council in about 48 AD seems most likely. This makes it one of the oldest books in the New Testament. The epistle or letter of James was written primarily to followers of Jesus from among diaspora Jews scattered around the Mediterranean. James was a very practical book, focusing primarily on patience, endurance, and testing, finding joy in trials, applying the scriptures to everyday life, love, 
advice on conflicts and quarrels, avoiding friendship with the world, prayers for the sick, and demonstrating genuine faith in action. In short, James issues a challenge to the followers of Jesus to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. While it's important to read our Bibles and to understand the teachings of Jesus, it's important to act on what Jesus taught. It's like Granddad always used to say, make sure your words speak louder than your actions. And actually, reverse that, and then you got it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. James 2, 14 through 17. There are a number of New Testament references to James, the half-brother of Jesus, the leader of the Jerusalem church. There are also two important historical references to James outside the Bible from the first and second century AD, Josephus and Hegesippus, who both recorded the death of James by martyrdom. The Roman historian Josephus, writing in the late first century, placed the time of the killing of James in 62 AD. This account states that James was stoned in Jerusalem for allegedly breaking the Mosaic law. The church historian Hegesippus, writing in the second century, records that James was preaching that Jesus was the Messiah during Passover. The religious leaders of Judaism in Jerusalem, instigated by Ananias the high priest, got angry and threw him from the top of the temple. Apparently, he was still alive after the fall, so they beat him with clubs and stoned him, even while he continued to pray. In the eyes of the religious leaders, James was a life wasted, promoting the teachings of a failed Messiah. But in reality, his courageous, decisive leadership in the Jerusalem church and at the Jerusalem council would be a legacy that would live on forever. Pretty cool, hey? Over the coming weeks, we, we are going to see why James was called James the Just. This letter has a heavy emphasis on real, practical, rubber hits the road faith. And, and there is a real strong encouragement for us to live a life of integrity. The other big thing that points to James, the brother of Jesus being the author of this book, is the fact that he uses remarkably similar words and phrases to that spoken by Jesus in the Gospels. Take a quick look at this image. This, this indicates close proximity and relationship with Jesus. The reality is the more that you hang out with someone, the more you hear, yourselves, hear yourself saying their words and phrases. Have you, have you noticed that? 100%. So who wrote this letter? Well, James, the brother of Jesus. James, the just. James, the pastor of the Jerusalem church. And that's the first question. The second question is, when was it written? Or put another way, what was the date? Well, if Jesus' um, brother, James, is the writer of this letter, then it must have been written before 62 AD because that is when he was martyred. There are two major opinions of when it was written. Some ins insist that it was written before AD 50 and others argue for a date that was closer to his death. The, re the really interesting thing is that if it was the earlier date, James may have been the first ever New Testament book ever written. Wow. And that is what most, most scholars tend to lean towards, believing uh, there are several things that make it probable that it was written between AD 45 and 50. Things like the author doesn't mention 
the Gentiles, which suggests that this simple early church is only just starting to reach them with the gospel. There is also a close affinity to the Old Testament teaching and the teaching of Jesus, which we've already sort of spoken about, which suggests it was written in a time close to Jesus and before the other New Testament letters were written. And lastly, James uses the word synagogue. And that points to an early period when Christianity was young and mostly Jewish. So, so when was this written? When was the book of James written? Well, it was most likely written between AD 45 and 50. Now for the third question. Who was it written to? What was the destination? Well, again, the letter is addressed to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. The recipients are followers of Jesus. Uh, James chapter 2 verse 1 says, My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Um, it's clear there they were most likely Jewish believers in the Messiah. The geographical location is not clear. However, most believers uh, most believe that they were believers forced to leave during the persecution that followed Stephen's death. These Jewish Christians were spread out over Judea, Samaria, uh, Phoen Phoen Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Syrian Antioch. Acts, Acts chapter eight verse one says, "And Saul approved of their of their killing him." On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered through Judea and Samaria. James, he was the, the leading elder of the Jerusalem church. He was their pastor. And as you read the letter, you'll see that he knows them very well. He knows them inter intimately and he writes as one with authority as the recognized leader of the church. He felt responsible for his scattered people. So he attempted to instruct them as if he would have done if they had been able to gather under his care and ministry in Jerusalem. That feels familiar, doesn't it? You, you see, we find ourselves in a time where most churches in the world have pretty much had this happen to them, not through persecution, but because of a pandemic. So I'm really looking forward to what the Lord might say to us in this season this season that we find ourselves in as a church. And then the fourth question, why was it written? What's the purpose or what's the occasion? So if this letter was written to believers who had just been dispersed from Jerusalem in the persecution following Stephen's death, the occasion for writing is, is pretty clear. It's fairly clear. These Christians no longer had contact with the apostles, nor was James among them to, to teach them and encourage them in their faith. And as we'll see, they had a fair bit going on. They had trials and temptations. There's persecution. The, the un ungodly rich were oppressing them. Their religion was becoming superficial formality, discriminatory practices revealed a lack of love and their relationships just weren't great. And James had to speak into those things and address the way they were talking to one another as well as their attitudes towards each other. So here we have James, their, their shepherd, their leader, uh, loving them, but also um, with a spiritual authority, he writes this letter to the people urging them to make the necessary Christ-centered changes, urging them to keep it real during this time of scattering. And so there we have the four, the four questions today. And that's, I guess, where I'd like to leave it. But before we finish up, I wonder what has stood out to you as we've looked at this introduction to the book of James? What stood out to you? Well, as we land this message, you know, here's just a couple of things about James 
that, are, that, that have really encouraged me. And I hope they encourage you too. And the first one is this. I loved learning about the fact that the words and the phrases that James uses in his letter parallel the words of his brother Jesus. I find that fascinating. And I, and I so want that for my own life. I want my words to be Jesus' words. Obviously, James had unparalleled access and relationship with Jesus. But I have his word. I have his spirit. And I can spend as much time as I want with him. I just got to do it. James 4.8 says, Come near to God and he will come near to you. It's beautiful, isn't it? The second thing that, that really touches me about James was, was learning about the love and the care that he had for his scattered church. That inspires me. It inspires me to want to keep doing the same for you, resourcing you, encouraging you, encouraging you to stick close to King Jesus and mobilizing you to do the same for the people God has entrusted into your care. And then lastly, I love his integrity. I love his willingness to say it how it is and his desire for the church to keep it real. I love that he, he is a, he's a head, a heart and a hands leader. And I know that as we hang out in the book of James this year, as we, we learn, as we live and as we serve, we will be inspired to keep it real. That's my prayer. James chapter 3 verse 13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Amen. Well, that's it. I hope today's message has encouraged you and has you looking forward to our journey together in the book of James. Keep it real, church. God bless. Thanks for joining us online today. I hope you've been refreshed and challenged by our service. I hope that in some ways you want to know more about Jesus. And look, if you do want to know more about Jesus or if you want to connect with us, if you want to give or if you want to serve, then there's links below our video here or you can go to our webpage to find out more. If you'd like prayer today, then please send a text to the number that will come up on your screen and people will pray for you. Thanks for joining us. Have a fantastic week. Meeting you in person, some song, blah, 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 blah.